casting couch lifestyle. What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. It's your boy James, back at it again. It's tank top weather, obviously. So sun's out, gun's out. Although zero tan was used in the making of this video. So um, there's that. Today I wanted to make a video about a topic I get asked about quite a bit in my DMs or on certain posts. Um, and it's, it's usually from like newer lifters and it has to do with like lifting equipment. You see a lot of the big lifters and obviously a lot of them are wearing like wrist wraps and belts and knee sleeves and, and wraps and, and squat shoes. It's become trendy that like, there's a lot of people out there that just buy a shitload of equipment um, and a shitload of gear and they think that that's going to make the difference between them, you know, benching 200 pounds and then benching like 600 pounds like Larry Wheels. Like throwing on a pair of wrist wraps and a, and a belt is not going to make you Larry Wheels overnight. <laughs> like, it's not going to make you Larry Wheels in general because the man is a freak. But it's, it's definitely not going to make you like instantly that much better of a lifter. You can buy the best knee sleeves or the best knee wraps in the world and they're not going to make you squat a thousand pounds, right? It's going to take years, it's going to take good genetics, it's going to take awesome training. You have to be a better lift, a good lifter already and then the gear just helps kind of keep you safe. So let's talk a little bit about the gear because like for those of you who are not familiar, this is the lifting gear that I'm talking about. So these, these are our old RIP gunsmith, but these are like our, our old lifting uh, wrist wraps, right? These are longer, they got the, the, the thumb loop. Basically, you throw them on and they wrap around your hand and your wrist, and then you Velcro them on. Boom, it's a really sloppy job, but basically you see how that works and it's creating support through your hand and your wrist. Basically, it's helping prevent your wrist from snapping back. Uh, so when you're bench pressing, you have more power and it feels like it's not gonna break your wrist when you got like 400, 500 pounds on the bar. Uh, so it's basically providing support. You know, this is just like a cotton elastic material, you know, a little bit of stretch, a little bit of give but it provides a lot of support. And then we have, what else we have? Shout out to Mark Bell for these. We got some OG strong knee sleeves. You can see mine have been through some shit. And basically what these are, they're little thick neoprene sleeves. Basically slide them over your knee and they provide compression around the knee joint, which provides a level of you know safety. It helps keep the knee tight so you can, it's not all moving around while you're trying to squat. It also keeps like the joint warm because it's so tight and it's uh, it kind of keeps all the heat in. But it also allows like for a little bit of you know re rebound because when you start you know think about it's super tight and you're compressing it, it doesn't want to stay like that, so it kind of bounces out a little bit. So you get a little bit of a lifting benefit with this. But yeah, these are basically another lifting accessory and we got you know belts so basically provide some support around your core a level of you know assistance there but really that's just a, it's like a safety thing these are all great tools but they don't make you a better lifter they make you maybe a little bit safer maybe mentally they help you a little bit but really at the end of the day they're just tools to help Okay, they will not make or break you as a lifter. Okay, biggest thing I, I, I see a lot of people do is, especially newer lifters, they get into these traps where they, they go buy the, the, a set of lifters, they go buy a belt, they go buy some knee sleeves, they go buy some wrist wraps, they go buy some elbow sleeves, some, some compression cuffs, they buy all this stuff, and then they start wearing that constant. The problem with all of that is that you can, they can cover up some imbalances and, and make it so you can get away with certain things that maybe your body is not ready for. You have to have a base. You have to have a base already established before you start doing this stuff. You, you have to have stability in your knee joint before you start throwing knee sleeves on over it, all right? The knee sleeves will add a little bit of bonus 
stability. But if you don't already have some stability in that joint, the, the knee sleeve is just gonna cover up for that, which is fine for right that second, but down the road, it's going to lead you to some issues. If you think about somebody, if I throw a cast on my wrist, right? I have a, it provides a lot of support so that that bone can heal, right? When I take the cast off, it's gonna take me a while to get used to that extra range of motion. I, I'm very susceptible as soon as I take that cast off to re-injuring my wrist f until I start building back up the strength and the range of motion and the stability in the surrounding muscles. And the same thing goes with the wrist wraps. If you're always wearing wrist wraps, or if you're always wearing knee sleeves, or if you're always wearing a belt, when you take that stuff away, those joints and the, those muscles that are supposed to be responsible for creating stability and uh, keeping you safe on a regular basis, they're gonna be atrophied or they're gonna be weaker and they're not gonna be, or they're not gonna be used to firing and you're gonna be way more susceptible to injury. It covers up and creates these imbalances and then they become dependent on the gear, which leads to more like serious injuries down the road. If you don't know how to brace your core under a squat without a belt, you're opening yourself up to some giant issues down the road, even with the belt. The belt is added protection on top of you already knowing how to brace your core. You should already know how to brace your core, then you throw the belt on, and then you're like at the top of your game. But if you don't know how to brace your core, you throw the belt on, it's not gonna, it's not gonna help you that much. It's gonna maybe help you a little bit, but it's not gonna, it's not gonna save you. My recommendation, if you're gonna start, if you're gonna wear lifting gear, do all of your warm up and sets under maybe like 80, 85%. Do all of those working sets or weights without the wrist wraps, without the knee sleeves, without the belt. All right, once you get up to around that 80, 85% range, for those sets, go ahead and throw the belt on, throw the knee sleeves on, throw the, the, the wrist wraps on. When you're, when you're getting to that like max, getting towards that max effort, then it's all right to start throwing that stuff on because that's gonna help keep you safe under maximum loads, all right? But as you're doing all your working sets or your back down sets or your warm up sets, um, don't throw the wrist wraps and the knee sleeves on you don't need that, all right? Start, start conditioning your body to be able to handle volume and handle some weights um, without those you know, support systems in place, all right? It, it stresses your body and it allows your body to build up some strength and some tolerance. For me, personally, unless I'm over 80%, I don't throw my belt on, all right? And even nowadays, like recently, I've been training without a belt, um, and I, I don't throw that the belt on really at all, okay? Uh, but I'm not saying you need to do that, but I'm saying, you know, save the belt for when you're getting to those, those hot, heavy, heavy weights. Um, same thing with my wrist wraps. I don't throw my wrist wraps on unless I'm doing my like one or two top sets, you know? Unless I'm over 90, 90%, I'm not throwing my wrist wraps on because I want that stability in my, sh in my wrist. I went through a period where I was wearing wrist wraps all the time. When I first got them, I was throwing them on all the time. And I started having the worst wrist pain. I never had wrist pain before I started throwing the wrist wraps on because I conditioned my body to function with this crutch. And then I took the crutch away and my wrist would hurt, okay? So that's my recommendation for elbow sleeves, wrist wraps, knee sleeves, belt. Save that stuff for when you're getting 80, 85% near, near to that max effort. Don't wear them during your warm-up sets. Don't wear them during some of your working sets. Um, don't wear them during your back off sets. Like, don't wear them all the time. But yeah, that's, that's my thoughts on all these lifting accessories. There's nothing wrong with lifting accessories. They're great. I love them myself personally. I collect a lot. I have way too many. So if there's anybody who loves and is a, a gear whore, that's me, I collect all these lifting accessories. But that being said, they are not the end all be all. Do not become dependent on them and use them responsibly, all right? Especially if you're a newer lifter or you're new to strength training, use them sparingly, 
they are a tool, they should not become a crutch. And we got, I, if you listen this far, I appreciate you guys for checking out the video. Uh, make sure you guys leave a comment below. Let me know what you guys think of this. Like I said in the previous videos, more content coming soon, two times a week. Mondays and Thursdays, I'm dropping content. Mondays is podcast day. Thursday is like rant, informational video day like today. Um, yeah, leave a comment below. Hit the like button. Hit the subscribe button. Check me out on social media. And yeah, I appreciate you guys. Stay savage, my friends. Peace.